As we read the gospel records, we read eyewitness accounts of the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. In a sense, the gospels are just the beginning of Christ's work. The adventure continues in the book of Acts. In this study with Scott Pauley, we consider the continuing work of Christ through the Holy Spirit, who works through the apostles and the New Testament church. Now, let's get in on the adventure. Today, I'd like to teach you one of my least favorite words. Now, a full disclosure, I don't like the word because I don't like to do it. I don't like the word because every time I hear it, I either get uh, under conviction or annoyed. And yet, this word is one of the words that opens all of God's power and blessing to our lives. Isn't that interesting? And so often, the very things, the truth we fight against is actually the thing working for us. Now, the word today is the word wait. I don't know if you're a patient person or not, but I am not a patient person by nature. I think uh, as I get a little older and hopefully as I'm growing in the Lord, God is maturing that part of my, of my character, his character in me. Uh, but by nature, as a sinner, I'm impatient. I want what I want, and I want it right now. And don't listen so piously. You're the exact same way. Uh, we don't want to sit too long in a fast food drive through uh, We have such a mentality now. We have to have it right now on our time. Uh, we hate the, uh, the term holding pattern when it comes to the airplane circling the runway. Uh, we don't like to sit in a waiting room. Now, why is that? Because we all think we know what is best, and we all think that we know the best timing. And yet one of the great revelations of Scripture is that our God is the God of perfect timing. We're returning today to our study. The adventure continues in the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 1. We pick up right where we left off in verse number 4 with the disciples. And the Bible says in verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but, here's the word, wait. Wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, there are a couple of fascinating things. One is a very practical thing. He tells them, stay in Jerusalem. Doesn't that seem opposite of what makes sense? The very city where he's been crucified, the very place where they are under threat of intensified scrutiny and persecution, he says, wait right where you are. Sit still for a moment. Uh, that's so unlike us. We want to get to the next place, move to the next thing, get as far away from danger as possible. The Lord says, sit still, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And the other thing that is interesting to me is something that's theological, and that is all three members of the Godhead are here. The Father is here. The Lord Jesus is speaking. And who is he promising is going to come? The Holy Ghost. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all at work in the midst of the waiting. Isn't that wonderful? When you are waiting, God is at work. Uh, I think there's really a, a divine irony here that the book is the book of action. It's the acts. And what is the first action? Wait. What is the first work God tells them to do? Sit still and watch the Lord at work. Now, this is not the waiting of mere inactivity. It's not the waiting of impatience. It is the waiting of total dependence. It's the waiting that says, I don't know what to do, and I don't have the power to do it, so I'm just going to wait on the God of perfect knowledge and of all power. And let me give you two or three truths from this scripture today. The first is this, uh, that our waiting is relying on his presence. So we're not just sitting around doing nothing. That's not what we mean by the word waiting. This waiting is rather a statement that we are relying on the Lord, God's presence. We must have him. In the case of these disciples in Acts 1, they needed the Holy Spirit uh, they could do nothing without the guidance and the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And friend, I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit of God has now come. We're living on this side of the day of Pentecost, and he indwells every believer. But you still need the Holy Spirit every day, and I need the Holy Spirit every day. We need his guidance. We need his direction. Do you remember what Jesus had just told the disciples in John chapter 16 and verse number 13? He said this, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. If you need direction, if you need guidance, 
If you need to understand things to come, what you need is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. Not plans, not strategy, not busyness, but Him. You know, we all think if we could just do something, we could make it better. We're fixers, aren't we? Uh, we, We're going to figure it out, make it happen, get it done. God says, stop right where you are, hit the pause button, and wait on the direction of the Holy Spirit. So first, this waiting is a reliance on His presence. Secondly, this waiting is rooted in His Word. Now, please don't miss this. In Acts chapter number 1, Listen carefully to what the Bible continues in verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth." Please don't miss this. This is so practical and yet so personal. And it is this. The only way they were going to wait is by simply meditating in the promise that Christ had given. Go back to the Word. We don't just sit around waiting on the Lord to do something, waiting on the Lord to show us something with some sign from heaven. Instead, we wait in the Word. This waiting must be rooted in the Word of God. Spend more time in the Bible. If you need direction, Get in the Word and let the Word get into you because the will of God is always revealed through the Word of God. Do you remember when the Lord met Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9? And uh, Paul, whose name was Saul at the time, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? The Lord didn't say, I want you to be the apostle to the Gentiles and have three missionary journeys and start dozens of churches and write most of the New Testament. What did he say? Go down to Damascus where you were headed. Go to the house and sit still there, and it will be told you what to do. In other words, one step at a time, one day at a time, one word at a time, God revealed his will. The wise men seeking the Lord Jesus, the star stops several miles from Bethlehem. Why? Because it was in that place that the word would be sought, that the Old Testament prophecies would be discovered of where the Christ child would be. I say again, the will of God is always revealed through the word of God. And so, like George Mueller of old, what we must do is every day get into the Word and find God's promise and then lean on that promise each day. So, the waiting is relying on His presence. It is rooted in His Word. And then, this is very important, this waiting is always resting in His timing. Do you believe that our God is always right on time? Do you believe that God is ordering your steps and your stops? Galatians 4, 4 said, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. May I tell you the same God that was right on time in the sending of his son is right on time in the guiding of your life. You may not understand it. You may not like it. But the reality is God is never early and God is never late. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah chapter number 64 uh, that God has prepared things that your eye has never seen and your ear has never heard, and he's prepared it for him that waiteth for him. May I say the best is always yet to come for those who are willing to wait on God. It's just as much a sin to get ahead of God as it is to lag behind God. Rely on his presence, root yourself in his word, and rest in his timing today, my friend. While you are waiting, Christ is working. The same is true today as it was then. The Lord is at work in this world through His Holy Spirit, drawing people to Himself. What a privilege as God's children to be a part of what God is doing in this world today. If you'll visit enjoyingthejourney.org, you will find many resources that will equip you as you walk with the Lord. You will find previous podcast series and episodes, full-length Bible messages, and a topical search engine that will aid you in studying Bible subjects. If this podcast is a blessing to you, we hope you will share it with a friend. Be sure to join us on the next episode of this continuing adventure through the book of Acts. Acts.